and then basically locking you to the command that these are reflected on. So when we first conceived of this program, we had uh, proposed it to be a grant on that property every three years. Uh, and, and I should be more precise, it's really a rolling 36 month period is a better way to think of it than uh, thinking of it as calendar years. So if the village board were to award a grant in uh, next month, November of 2020, the way the program stands today, we wouldn't consider making another grant uh, possibly in the same shopping center for three years so until uh, November of 2023. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, that we propose uh, reducing the, the time limitation on it. Um, the reason for three years, uh, for those of the two of you, I think who go back to the TIF rebate days uh, for our downtown TIF program, the parameters of that uh, were after three years for our property. So, so far to date, the grants awarded have ranged from uh, 5% for the streets of Bartlett, as I mentioned, where the village made about $100,000 with the grants for what amounted to over $2 million worth of improvements. And the highest one uh, that's been awarded so far has been 35% for the sale. Uh, if you recall, they came before you about a year ago at this point and um, have and they still have plans for improving the facade uh, as well as expanding into the vacant unit that's uh, to the north of there. So that's another thing I wanted to bring up is when we first proposed this to you and the building board, we were talking about 50% grants. But in practice, uh, you know, if somebody has proposed spending $100,000 on the property, we have been recommending the full 50000 grants. We've done our best to be both judicious and fair with the amounts of the grants. And then that's something that we look at. Uh, it was a new program. Really, the last time we spoke about it at length was three years ago. It was, it was a new program. We were thinking about 50% rebates. We were thinking about a lot of $10,000 grants for $20,000 projects. But in reality, what has come before us is between 120,000, 150,000, 200, 700,000. So the grants have been larger, I think, than what we originally envisioned. However, we're recommending uh, smaller percentages. So I'm going to go quickly again. What I have, in, what I have in the packet, but again, it's it's the original um, application, just with some amendments to it. So I've highlighted some of those. Um, instead of writing that grants would range from 5,000 up to 50,000, um, we eliminated or proposed eliminating the reference to 5,000 hours. Instead, just leaving it to up to 50,000 hours. Um, one other reason for that I should mention is Scott and I have had a few discussions with very small projects with people who might only do four, five, eight thousand dollars with the bill out. And we don't see any reason why we couldn't bring a very small vehicle in front of you. Just somebody who might be replacing their sign or their awnings or doing some landscaping. So I think the reason for five thousand minimum we were thinking kind of you know bigger. Um, and not that we don't think bigger, so we do, but we still do. But uh, we don't want to uh, discourage somebody, a small business owner who might want to do a $2,000 improvement or a $4,000 or a 6000 And in those cases, you might uh, see a 50% recommendation. Uh, we might have somebody came up and wanted to do $10,000 of improvements. It would be my inclination probably would be to recommend five dollars But um, we don't think that we need to set that as a minimum amount. So um, there's two references in the application <clears throat> where I just changed it from 5,000 to 50,000 just to the maximum of $50,000. Uh, as I mentioned, I think the biggest change that we proposed is changing the, the three-year period to two. Uh, we think that can give some of these properties that need uh, 
maybe the way you can put it is multi-phase improvements uh, that somebody can, can come back again two years later. Uh, a good example of that is we're still trying to fill the large um, former private fresh market space in the streets of Ireland, although as you all know we've had some tenants come in. Uh, it's been divided up and uh, Taco and Tequila restaurant as well as our manager are both in those spaces. Um, and then uh, something that I, I think is important, also equally important to the time parameter uh, of two years, is to put into the application and the rules of it and tell people this firmly, both when they meet with us and when they come before the EDC and the building board, to put a one year. Uh, limitation on when the work should be done. Now, I will also say that that probably won't happen in every instance. There's always reasons there why things sometimes take longer than anticipated. Um, but what, uh, what we had originally in the application was a reference to commence the project within six months. And quite frankly, we've seen our last two lead up projects, neither one of them really commenced within six months, and also to be completed within 12. But I would love to put that in there, along with an asterisk that should a project be approved and for whatever reason doesn't start within six months, doesn't finish within 12. I, I recall Commissioner Sandilla saying um, probably six or eight months ago about one of the meeting minutes to bring some kind of update to, to the EDC. Now, I wouldn't necessarily always ask the petitioner to come in. Maybe, maybe we would in some instances, but to provide at least an update. And quite frankly, some of the smallest projects are some of the ones where the businesses have the hardest time of funding and completing it. But I think it's important that we have that language in there just so when uh, staff meets with them, when they come up for the EDC, when everybody tells you what their plans are, you can you know, ask them that and say, we can say, you know, we, we expect this to start within six months and to be completed within a year. They don't get the money until they provide the EDC, correct? That's correct. That's correct. What we're actually trying to avoid, part of it is, is accounting issues where uh, projects carry over year after year. Um, like, as I mentioned, we haven't had an application for a while, so we're, besides the small business grant, we still have money in our meter program right now. But um, it's kind of a juggling act sometimes when, when Scott and myself and other staff are working with various businesses. And we're trying to project. I can tell you right now we have at least three, possibly four beta applicants that would come in. But of course, sometimes they indicate that they will uh, apply and they don't. And then sometimes something completely unexpected comes up. If somebody wants to buy and we have a building. There's a possibility of somebody be having um, the old building we call the garage uh, right behind JC's. Um, there's, I think it's 131 South Oak, and that would be a meeting of grant applicant that we would have anticipated um, a few months ago. Um, another thing I also mentioned in March, but we never really formalized, was um, we had uh, a military veteran that I worked with to come in and do a garage work company in, in the business park and inquired about his program, but because it wasn't a sales tax producing business per se, told them they weren't eligible. Um, I should mention this, that I probably tell more businesses, you know, quite a few businesses that they're not eligible because they're office type of uses. But um, this one happened to be a military veteran who was working with the VA and um, getting special lending to get a business going. And we had mentioned this back pre-pandemic to you. We'd like to have that just as another consideration. Um, again, it wouldn't be a 
25 or 50 thousand dollar grant for something that doesn't um, produce many jobs or sales tax revenues, but it might be something where we would like to bring in maybe a five or ten thousand dollar grant on the application in front of you, uh, considering some of these military standards. Um, again, I, uh, going on the application page, uh, I mentioned something about a business plan. What happened in practice with the beta program was the first few small businesses, for instance, um, Indian Express was our first applicant, and then Barbara Tap, I think, was our second. And the village board wanted to see some pretty uh, detailed business plans, which hadn't been included as part of the original application. And so that's just something I'm adding just as a line um, to include a short, uh, what I wrote as a two to five page business plan. Of course, the Indian Express and Barbara Tap ones were like 30 plus years. But we want to see at least some, that there's, there's like, uh, critical elements of a business plan, and we want to make sure somebody's at least considering the competition in the area and the demographics and the business climate and uh, things like that. So we want to we want to add a business plan to it. Um, I eliminated for now the amount requested because every applicant so far has requested fifty thousand. Every petition I put in front of you. Um, it's something if you think we should add it, add it it's, it's easy, it's just a line to type in. But um, we figured everybody, no matter how much they were spending or not spending, asked for $50,000. So uh, these are the proposed, I think that's the main ones in a nutshell. I get all the high points to it. Uh, we want to get this program up and running again. As I mentioned, we have um, a fair amount of business prospects right now that we're pitching this program to. And instead of just Scott and myself always saying, well, we're going to make improvements, we're going to make improvements, we want to formalize it a little bit more, put it on the application, um, and bring better applications and applicants in front of you. I shouldn't say better applicants, but strong uh, applicants. For you in the past years. And I'd be happy to discuss any of those points or answer any questions. Um, and we are asking for a formal uh, recommendation. Any endorsements have to be moved before the meeting of the new board? I'm sorry, Jerry, can you move me? The new board. These endorsements from the EDC have to be moved before the village board was approved. It's my understanding that would be the case. Uh, last time we proposed this to them was before the uh, 2018 to 2019 fiscal year. We don't necessarily want to bring somebody who's applied within the last two years before them, you know, when we have this uh, formal AS3. Same thing with the veteran application. Um, so, yeah, this is something, um, you know, we would hope. So you're suggesting to people that they request 50%? No, in the application rates that it'll be, uh, I, I want to say it's a little, it might be a little vague in the application, but there's reference to that we will reimburse a percentage. And that's the way it has worked typically in practice. Um, none of these come out really in a vacuum. We typically know who the applicants are going to be and what the project's going to be. So that's kind of early on. Um, typically, Scott and or I will meet with them. And then we'll have a staff meeting with, with some additional staff to discuss what the percentage or amount should be. So yeah, I took out those references to 50%, but it doesn't read it'll be 35%. Or it'll be 30 percent. It just is going to say we'll reimburse a percentage. That might be something we do have to refine at some point. But I don't think we want to just say we could say that it could be a range, but then we would have to you know, determine what the range would be. Probably 25. Thank you. 
there been any comments from our Zoom um, panelists? Uh, the commissioners. Yeah, I'm, I'm typing my question in because it's uh, audio is not the best right now. <clears throat> um, Commissioner Smidella said uh, that she would like to see a draft of the application with proposed changes. Um, I can actually pull that up. It is on the packet. I can share my screen real quick. Right. That was, that was part of the uh, packet. I did some yellow highlights just on the areas that were changed, but we'll, we'll uh, take a look at those. Can you see the uh, Google Chrome screen right now? Yes. Okay, one second here. Okay. Um, so the, what's on the screen right now is uh, the app, the first page of the application. Okay. Uh, it's highlighted maximum of 50,000, used to say 5,000 to 50,000. Where it says every two fiscal years, used to say every three fiscal years. Next page. There's a reference completed within 12 months. It just wasn't on that form. And then uh, consideration if the applicant is a military veteran, we add it. The next page. Where I have that little yellow mark after anticipated cost used to say amount requested. Every month they said every applicant's requested 50000 so far. Uh, I don't think that would change. You can assume they want the maximum grant. And then it is this plan I just added there. Um, and instead of writing a long thing, I made an effort of trying to keep this to a short, easy to use application. I just said to call me. Um, I have ample uh, information about. Uh, write a business plan or can send you to a store uh, or somebody at the Small Business Development Centers to help with the business plan. And I think the next page, uh, there was just one more little thing. The next page, again, calculated at some percentage. I probably could phrase that better, but that used to say 50%, calculated at 50%, and it was our last one or two petitioners that asked, you know, why aren't we recommending 50%, um, which is a good question. It said 50% all over. So um, calculated yeah, as a percentage. Um, so those are all the changes commissioners have made. Commissioner Hughes, uh, do you have any questions, Commissioner Hughes? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. I believe that the fact that two years, um, instead of the three years that are below the 36 month period, two years also a rolling 24 month period then, or? Yeah, I, I think that's the way we're going to look at it. I, I phrased it fiscal years. Uh, it's more for accounting purposes. Um, maybe we want to rephrase that to be more clear, a rolling. 24 month period, we can make that change. They used to say that in, uh, in the tip rebate, it's at a rolling 36 month period. That's a good, that's a good one. I do like the whole that we can play to have two fiscal years ago. I'm thinking that you're tied to the losers from the third Right. May 1st. Right. And, and you know what? We're, that's a good point. That, that's a, we will make that change. And the, um, I guess I hit it a little bit in the background. We're trying to make this more user friendly and to encourage more development. Instead of telling somebody, you know, if we have a good prospect, well, you might have to wait an extra year or wait an extra two years. Um, you know, of course, that might happen anyway, uh, unless you wait all time parameters, which ultimately, you know, I, I don't know, what, you know, how it may change and improve in the future. But I think for now, that's a good way to, to look at it. A low and trying to follow up. So that's a good point. If somebody gets a beta grant this December, we don't we want to clarify it doesn't mean in January 2022. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I would just like to see, you know, I'm just uncomfortable with the vagary of the calcul the calculation of an undisclosed percentage. Well, I'll, I'll make a comment on that. The undisclosed percentage, also keep in mind, uh, Commissioner Smedilla, if we go through a very successful year of development mm -hmm. and the beat up line item itself is running out, we can't create new money. So there does have to be a, a little bit of ambiguity in it because we don't know how much money we have available to us in this particular line item. Has, but hasn't this been calculated on anticipated sales tax revenue in the past? No, this program is taken out of uh, gambling money. Okay, I understand that it's taken out of gambling money, but it, and I'm, ta I'm talking about anticipated sales revenue by the establishment um, uh, requesting the grant. That's a big part of it, but it's also employee count. It's, do we have this business? Uh, is it in town? Is it part of our business mix? For example, if we have a pizza place that comes into town and they're anticipated to make a lot of tax revenue, we may not necessarily endorse the beta program because of the amount of pizza places we have. But if we have, let's say, a small bakery that may not make a lot of money, we may endorse a lot of money because that's not a part of our business mix. So it's sales tax, it's uh, demand, it's also location too. For example, Joey, if you want to take up a couple of those, can you go back to the pictures of the yeah. property? So if you look at those two properties, those, those are becoming somewhat dilapidated. If we have a user that's willing to put, let's say a couple hundred thousand dollars into one of those buildings and fix the guts of the building, bring it to code and protect that asset that's within the village, we may endorse more money to them and recommend more money to them um, for you to look at and for the board to look at, even though it may not produce as high of a sales tax. Does that make any sense? Um, it does, but now aren't we kind of going down a slippery slope? Um, again, these were to be sales tax revenue producing um, companies, and now it looks like we're we're giving basically corporate welfare to investors who want to come up, come in and fix up the building. It says emphasis will be given on sales tax producing, I, I believe. You're right about that, emphasis will be, but... Um, Tony, maybe you could shed some light on that as well. No, I, I think that you you summarized it well. Um, some of these buildings, like the ones pictured, they're they're beyond suffering from deferred maintenance. They've they've been neglected and abandoned is a better way to put it. Um, we weigh several factors. Scott had mentioned uh, sales tax. We put in here that sales tax producing is preferred. Uh, so far, we have only brought sales tax producing businesses in front of you. I don't think that would change a lot. But also, as Scott mentioned, uh, the type of business mix, the building itself, the number of employees, and uh, those are all factors that we look at. I mean, we could certainly strengthen the language instead of saying in some percentage, say, based on factors such as da, 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 you know, business mix, number of employees, total investment. Um, the building that's shown, uh, the lower one, that one at, uh, I guess it's 143 South Hill. I'm sorry, 151 South Hill. I mean, that one needs extensive rehabilitation. We've been trying to get uh, people to invest in it, bring it up to code, beautify it, uh, open a business that's open to the public, and really without any type of um, incentives or financial support from the village, probably it would just remain vacant like that. It's, it's a crime to be vacant building. So, um, yeah, we, we will, Commissioner Smithville, we'll tighten up the language on that. Um, but yeah, there is, we want to have a little latitude also. So we, as Scott said, we're not, 
we, we might offer a larger percentage incentive on building things like that, uh, for sure, than like uh, other pizza and place coming in the strip center. To be honest, I don't think we can bring that pizza place in the strip center to you, but um, there are, there are um, you know, vacancies and long-term vacancies in some of the shopping centers that we would definitely try to lure somebody in uh, through the beta thing. So, uh, yeah, we, we base it on a lot of different factors. And any, one more thing, any proposed improvements to the language of that? I think we would just say calculate it in a percentage based on factors including, and then some of the ones we just made. So you want to go that I just want to thought um, a percentage is calculated by the village staff and approved by the EDC and the village board. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's, that's perfect. Yeah. It's too long. 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 Five times or, or eight times or ten times. Or so we're not just going to say, here's what you, you know, A, B, and C, and here's your percentage. Right? We're going to take a, take a hard look at it, what we can do to, to get somebody to invest in our There's a lot of variables, especially in the local that we've Yeah, you, you have to be, there has to be enough. Room in there to do what's going to be right to get the right tenant in there, the person who's going to open it and be committed to their business there. And, and not another good place in the strip mall. Right, right. And I'm sure you've seen that um, most of the new, most of the beta applicants so far have been food related. Uh, most of the ones that we're speaking with now is possible applicants are food related. And uh, buildings like these, I'm not saying these would be, but some of these uh, former office spaces like um, the Myra building that uh, the Baldwin family converted into 125. I mean, those are total good rehabs. Um, with, you know, they need to put in every piece of infrastructure to build um, really. The, the beta grants we anticipate bringing in front of you, I think they're going to be similar to that. They're going to be food related in spaces that many of them weren't previously food related businesses. In, in, in terms of the percentages, I, th I think it's important to note that there has to be some judgment involved. For example, if we have a ma and pa in Bartlett for, let's say, 20 years and they've been putting money into the kitty for 20 years and they've been providing a service and a sales tax revenue to the village we may give them a higher percentage to do the same type of build out than we'll give somebody who we just met that moved in from california um, so we probably give somebody within our community that's been doing business in our community uh, a higher percentage than, than the unknown. So I, I think that's kind of one, one thing to point out in terms of the percentages and, and how we make that judgment. Yeah, that, that's a great point, Scott. Um, when it's still ultimately needed in front of the board, uh, right at the board meeting, they increase the amount of the grant from what we get recommended and then the EMC had endorsed. So, uh, Remember, we're bringing recommendations in front of them. Uh, so we might recommend 30% if we think it's not high enough, or we might bring another place where we recommend 40% and you might think that it's too high. So uh, we wouldn't be offended if you change the, the percentages. Um, we just try to bring, like I said, what we think would be fair, um, equitable among the applicants, and uh, you know what, what we think you get a project kind of off the ground, but we'll make that change um, to the language suggested. We had a question about the restricted um, percentage that you uh, have now. 
Is there a big difference in offering a floating uh, percentage rate over a fixed percentage rate? Floating, could you, could you elaborate a little bit more? Talking about changing, you don't want to offer a fixed percentage rate. Right. So what's the, what's the flexibility? Well, again, we kind of base it on the scope and size of the project, who the applicant is, the, the business. Um, like I said, I don't think, I mean, some of the, pro, some of the projects we bring up might be a twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars build up, but others might end up being a million dollars. When it comes to how we, we talked about trying to reduce it, of the amount of time, for projects that we anticipate, as I mentioned, we'd like to bring one early next year, if possible, to build out the rest of the empty space and streets of fire. So, I mean, again, that would, that would, we would look at every factor. That space, I can tell you off the top of my head, has been vacant for more than nine years. So it's a high priority to build. Uh, we take a massive amount of investment. It would produce jobs for the man. Um, our top targeted business, of course, is a grocery store. Um, this project, the prospect isn't necessarily a grocery store for that space, but it's our largest chronic vacant space. So I, I can tell you, if and when a data grant comes before you for that, it's going to be pretty thorough. It's going to have a lot of information. And it probably will take some type of grant and assistance to build that space. It's a very uh, expensive, time consuming project. I'll see that each, each person that comes in and wants to do something with the building is maybe different than the average person. Right. And I mean, in the case just making up a number that they would spend a million dollars, I mean, that would be something would recommend the maximum 50,000, but keep in mind that's only 5% of the project cost, so it kind of skews the number. Even if you were spending 250,000, you know, we probably would recommend it. But, you know, we do, we do set a limit uh, at 50,000 because of the way it's funded. 250,000 per year. We want to be able to make multiple grants. So I I mean, as a staff person, I tend to shy away from a fixed amount for that most time. Are we looking for a regular income? Yeah. And one more is that for a regular income? I recommend that we have more approved of recommendations out of our own phone. Go for it. I second it. Move by Jerry, second by Ian. Okay. I will call roll. Commissioner Harrison? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Smadilla? No. Commissioner Kubasco? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Gupka? Yes. And Commissioner Lewinsky? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion to We'll forward that to the some upcoming board meeting. We will move on to the next agenda item, the sales tariffs and unemployment tariffs. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Commissioner Kamasi. Uh, these are two of the metrics that we follow. Uh, I brought this up in the August meeting, if you recall, we were talking about it a little bit. Uh, typically, since the EBC conceived of the marketing plan from 2016 to 2020, we had a lot of metrics and key performance indicators 
that we were looking at. Um, a lot of those indicators had to do with number of businesses and equalize, equalize assessed value and uh, vacancy rates and, and all kinds of uh, economic indicators. Um, I choose to bring this one for you uh, tonight and, and periodically now because uh, I can't very well recall the February economic indicators meeting where it was all great positive news. We had the lowest vacancy rate we've ever had, the lowest unemployment rate we've ever had, the highest sales tax revenues we ever had. Things were uh, going on steadily upward trajectory until March and then April and May. And um, so this is something I want to keep my eyes on and then just bring to before the EDC so you know have a grasp. But again, even as we go over some of these data grants. Uh, to keep in mind why we stress uh, the type of businesses that we do. Um, ultimately, economic development, what we're doing here is trying to drive more investment in the community, increase employment opportunities, increase sales tax revenues. And so anyway, I'm going to uh, brief, briefly touch upon this. Uh, so two of the uh, metrics that we review early every year include the sales tax report and the unemployment report. Um, like I said, unemployment reached the lowest I ever seen since I started here in spring of 05, down to 2.8% in February, and then went up to the highest that I ever seen here in the village within one month, up to 16.2%. Uh, you can see that it has improved. Um, I should mention these statistics come from the directly from the Illinois Department of Employment Security. So uh, you know, they're always a couple of months behind in terms of um, having, they have their specific number state line. You hear that probably every morning on the news or once a week of the unemployment reports in the country and the state. But they drill down to uh, zip codes and towns, and that's usually a couple of months behind. So you can see that it's gone from 16 to 13, well, really around 14% for two months. 10% and then August went under 10. So, uh, again, I'll probably report this again in a few months. I mean, it's heading in the right direction. Uh, Firebed, as you know, has a lot of leading drinking establishments and service businesses and uh, very large industrial base that's growing. So, again, I think uh, while we were meeting remotely, somebody asked why it went so high. And, I mean, the answer, there's your answer. It's a lot of hospitality. Um, food business jobs, industrial jobs, and involved. So that's, that's trending in the right direction. And then when it comes to sales tax, um, sales tax uh, also hit um, pretty low, uh, historic low, you could say, uh, in those same months, April, May, and June. Um, I'm sorry, April and May. But in June, the municipal tax went up um, again over 200,000 that the village um, received in the month of June, um, meaning that there were at least $20 million worth of sales, taxable sales of the village, uh, went up again um, in July to 233,000, so about 23 million with taxable sales, and about 22 million in August. Um, so once again, we're a few months behind on that, but uh, it seems that the sales tax revenues have essentially rebounded. Um, the village was just heading into that $250 million per year range uh, when we started the year. And again, it probably won't be quite that high when we tally up all of 2020, obviously. But um, it should, you know, it should be returning to that range on a long time basis. So I just wanted again to bring that in front of you more for all purposes that our sales as the restaurants have reopened for the most part, the stores in town have all reopened. Uh, people return to shopping and eating and drinking at all those places. Uh, whether they were ordering carryout or eating in one of the tents outside or delivery, whatever the case may be, uh, the restaurant revenues really have uh, went an up where they basically have come down. Um, and, and of course, I'll improve in stores 
the ACE hired careers in Home Depots of the world um, and have done quite well. So has the one lone and large grocery store in our town. Um, it's basically crowded all day, every day, uh, to be doing very well in our cities. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. If you have any comments or questions on that, I'd be happy to respond. With the uh, pandemic taking away the revenue from not only our village at all, but you got other villages, I imagine, too. Uh, does our village seem to cut different areas in order to have the books even out? I think I'm going to uh, defer to Scott on that one. I mean, yeah. we, we're very close to the budget for sure. We, we've discovered that our uh, tax revenues are not only varied, but resilient. And uh, I would say compared to other communities, we've fared, uh, we've fared pretty well. And uh, not only that, but we've been working diligently to uh, secure money from the CARES Act to help uh, pay for some of our uh, personnel costs for, for COVID-19. So um, although we have seen a little bit of a loss. Uh, it's not as uh, not as dramatic as we thought. And our administrator and our board did a really good job. Um, we deferred hires from our police department, from our uh, community development department, and we pushed off vehicle purchases. Staff uh, got the village hall staff got no raises and um, no merit increases. So we've been very conservative. But uh, some of those things that I did mention, now that we've been able to assess where we're at, some of those things are, are going to start coming to fruition. Thank you. I do want to add one thing in their new business is that um, probably in the last couple of meetings I mentioned that we've been working with a uh, prospect of what would ultimately become the largest building in the village. This, uh, we've been working with developers, brokers, and the owner of Bruce Creek Business Park is down for Chicago Stock Company. Um, Jeff Brown is the president of the company, and we were extremely close with them. As you all know, uh, Brewster Creek Business Park has been one of the very best examples in the state of Illinois of uh, implementing a uh, tip district, uh, which was once a gravel quarry. For decades, it was a gravel quarry that has been converted through tip. Tax increment financing into one of the premier business parks in the area. So we're we're extremely proud of, of the business park and the work that the village has done there. Um, it's not completely built out. The DuPage County portion, however, is close to build out. Uh, I'm going to ballpark. I always ballpark about 75 percent to 80 percent built out. Uh, but more importantly, this, the development sites that were the DuPage portion are up a smaller variety, five acres, seven acres. Uh, Jeff Brown told me you could combine a few sites to maybe get a 12 or 14 acre site. But when it comes to the big, uh, really gigantic uh, buildings, there's no more land available in DuPage. So, as you all know, the biggest project being built right now in the village is in Kesson, which is being built in the Bruce Creek Business Park in the Cook County portion. They obtained a class 6B status from the middle board, the Cook County board. You can only really build something that large around the border if you do get a uh, tax incentive of that nature. So uh, what, what the new business I want to tell you about tonight is this speculative building is coming uh, to the middle board next week for a review. Uh, I, I have received a class 6D application, which uh, I was working on today, uh, much earlier today, and uh, put it into the uh, foot board. 
for the packet for the next little board meeting. This is a 436,000 square foot building. Uh, again, as I mentioned, speculative. There's no tenant for it. It's a 30 plus million dollar investment. The um, developer for this one is called Connor Global, and it's a partnership between some developers, property developers, and some brokers. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's something that's coming down the pipeline. These large buildings are in high demand. I like to think about the type of businesses that I think will maybe be interested in a building at large. Uh, think of businesses where you order things that they deliver to your home on a instant basis. Amazon. Yeah, that's a good example. And uh, I'm not saying that, I'm just, what I'm conveying is that's the type of business that would be interested in. What, what they talk about in logistics all the time now is a last mile facility. So it won't be most likely a 400,000 square foot facility filled with people processing food like mine or Greco. It's just way too large uh, for that type of operation. Um, so it'll, it'll, they're promoting it as a warehouse distribution facility. Of course, it's not even approved yet, but um, it's something that's been in the works for at least all of 2020. I think Jeff Brown, um, as well as myself answering like random questions from the developers last year, um, you know, about the, the site and if the village generally supports the Class 6 fees. Now, one more thing about the Class 6 B program, it reduces Cook County taxes to be competitive and comparable to the page and cane. So it's particularly important to communities like ours that span uh, multiple counties around, around the border. Um, saves uh, in excess probably of a million dollars per year on the property tax. So uh, that's something that's coming down the pipeline. Months from now, you'll see it getting built, hopefully, if everything goes through. And then in the spring, we'll probably be talking about what we're trying to fill that building. Maybe, probably more likely a year from now. It's going to take a long time. Uh, build something like that. So that gets one thing the original thing that we're going to invest in $30 million dollars in the school area is passed. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I'll remind you, there's those two large spec buildings right at Stearns and Monitor by Logistics Property Company. Uh, one of them is still completely available, 207,000 square feet, and one of the other ones he has one tenant already. Uh, Coming soon. So, the, you know, uh, the village very much wants those still sooner rather than later, and even more so than the village, the developers and others want those still. Well, it sounds improved as long as they're coming in. Yes. We're going There's going to be trucks involved one way or the other. Hey, is anybody here being donated? 436,000 square feet spaces to be used by one tenant? You know, that would be ideal. Uh, when a developer builds that, it's always their intention. Uh, I think even for the village, that's preferable. Uh, you got one, there's less conflicts and issues usually if there's just one uh, large business taking up a space like that rather than two or more. But um, that developer has indicated that I think they're willing to divide it into two, but I don't think they want to carve it up like a shopping center, but they would prefer to land one of these in. Yes, and I know Scott's aware of this too, but there's, there's some traffic studies uh, being done currently regarding the business park. Um, Shift gears a little bit, but I mentioned TIF. This is a TIF that concludes in uh, really just a few years, I think about two or three more years on the Bush of Green TIF. So, with these large developments that are coming to the Cook County portion, uh, some members of the village board wanted a traffic analysis done. And there's one uh, in the works that's analyzing all the truck traffic. 
in chat, it's all over here. Right. I mean, as an economic development person, I can tell you, that, you know, when, when you're nearing full build out of the larger business plan, there's going to be some, especially when there's logistics involved, there's going to be some significant uh, trouble. It's something that the uh, plan commission looks at a lot when they look at buildings. The board is certainly cognizant of that. And, um, you know, we meet with a lot of businesses, and I'll give, give an example. There was one that I met with last week that was going to have extremely high truck traffic based on the size of the building. And honestly, we told them that we weren't amenable to that particular project. So we don't take every single project that's proposed to us that makes sense. Uh, for the overall planning and development of the area, that we certainly do. But we're always we're always aware of the attraction. I think the part of the road for the next town boy was the one on my own. I think the part of the road was from the door to the city of the time. Right. I see I see so many trucks. several times that we've spoken to IDOT that has been our number one priority and uh, we expect uh, some changes to that intersection in the near future uh, it is in their plans so we're looking uh, for uh, we're, we're, Mayor Wallace especially uh, continues to pressure IDOT to uh, make those changes sooner than later and we'll have a safer and more efficient uh, intersection. Thank you. 
and those who uh, who did her this week in the world and the final one, the Janari of Dharma. I'm not going to refer to that. Just in case, anyone want to make a proposal? Make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.